Hey guys, Odin here, talking about this little guy here. Uh, if you are a uh, family person and you actually have a minivan to transport your children in, uh, you might have one of these dealies here in your car. And these things can be a hassle. In this particular model of car, this is a uh, Nissan Quest 2006. Uh, it's a friend of mine's vehicle. <clears throat> it has a flat screen TV here. And then it has the controls for them over here. The only problem is, well, the DVD player is not conveniently located. If you look down here, you'll see these little cables. The DVD player is located right there where those little cables are. Now, here's the problem with that location. With this location, the driver cannot just sit there and simply change the DVDs, nor can the children change the DVDs because of where it's placed. They have to then put, pull this down, take their drinks off of the center console, pull this down, put DVDs in, in and out as the movie runs out. But I'm here to tell you, for less than $100, I'm going to show you how to use those auxiliary ports to put a media PC in your car so that this little guy here can play a bunch of movies while you're driving and you don't have to worry about switching out DVDs as you drive. Let's go ahead and go to the table and I'll show you what I got. So what are we looking at here? This is the Raspberry Pi Spec B. Now the Raspberry Pi Spec B is a little bit different from Spec A, which is why I, uh, I chose it. It's semi-encased, as you can see, because I didn't feel like taking it fully out of its case, because that's actually one of the parts you're going to need. Um, the reason why you want a Spec B and not a Spec B Plus is that Spec B has these little um, uh, composite out, and it has HDMI, while the Spec B Plus has HDMI only, and it has uh, four USB instead of two USB. So I know what you're thinking, why would you want this little guy here? Well, the problem is if you remember from the van that we were in, that it only had this composite video. A lot of the older vans only have composite video, while the newer vans should have HDMI. So this one gives you the best of both worlds so that you can easily transport it in an old vehicle or a new vehicle. Perfect. So that being said, I know it looks kind of high tech, how do you use it? You know, is it easy? Well, I can say that I've been doing IT for over 10 years now, and this is by far one of the easiest pieces of technology I've ever come across. Uh, requires little to no education on how to use it or how to set it up. And I found it to be, well, just nice. So let's go over what we have here. Right here in the front is an ethernet port. You have two USBs. This is your audio. This is your video. This is your power. Here in this little slot here, that's where your H, uh, that's where your SD card is going to go in for your for your uh, operating system, and there's your HDMI cable. All right, so now that you know all that, how does this actually work for your media PC in your car? Firstly, I want to just go ahead and throw this out there. If you do not have a TV in your car, you can still use this. I will add as optional stuff uh, in the comments below. I found some uh, TVs you can buy on, um, on uh, Amazon for about 70 bucks. You can plug it into this device and you're good to go and you can use it by universal stand for your car for the back seat and you can still use it as a media PC in your car. It also can double as a media PC in your house or hotel. And the reason is this has an HDMI card, uh, or sorry, HDMI slot here. So what I normally do when I go on family trips is it plays very well on a flat screen TV and one of those small TVs. So what I do on family trips, I normally take HDMI cable with me. And when I finally get to the hotel, I can plug it right into the hotel's TV and bam, my kids have exactly the same level of entertainment they had on the road in the hotel. So I don't have to worry about them going, Oh, I want to watch such and such show, but it's only in the, in the car. So let's break down the price. I paid $10 for the case. The case comes with this bottom piece here, comes with this top piece here. Do you need the case? Not necessarily, but I would highly recommend getting the case because with children, they're going to try to stick things in here and you don't want them to do that. The Raspberry Pi Spec B goes for $20 when I purchased this one here, so it's not that expensive. So you go ahead and it's very easy. You lock it in down here, take the top of the case here, put it over it. Done. It's in its case. See that? Easy. Next, you're going to need one of these guys. This is an SD card. It only has, as you can see here, eight gigs of memory. You don't need much more than that. 
you're going to load the operating system for Raspberry Pi. I'm going to segue to that part now and I'll show you how to do it. You just stick this in the SD slot of your, car, of your actual computer and then follow the steps we're about to do. Okay guys, so this is actually really simple. Like I said, it's fall off the log easy to set up a Raspberry Pi device. This is what you're going to have to do. Go to raspberrypi.org and then you're going to see a downloads, uh, do a little slash downloads there. It's going to take you to this little downloads page. Now after you go to this download page, you just scroll down and you're going to see this guy right here. It's the Raspberry BMC or RAS BMC. And you want to go ahead and just download the zip. Once you download the zip, it's going to be an image file, so you want to save it to your computer. It's 256 megs, so go ahead and download this. And I'm just going to tell it to go onto my desktop. Okay, guys, after it's finished downloading, what you want to do is load this application to your computer, Win32 Disk Imager. And from there, you want to click on this little blue folder here. You got to go over to your desktop and then from your desktop you want to change that right click on it and you want to select it boom and then make sure that this is selected to whatever your um, SD card is and you want to hit write now here's the thing when you write you're overwriting everything on that drive so like I said make sure it's a blank drive it's gonna take about five to ten minutes after it's done writing you're done All right so now that you have this loaded with your Raspberry Pi uh, operating system on it. it has XBMC as I stated in the uh, video before and XBMC is going to be used to uh, stream content to your TVs you're going to take it turn it around is it the other way there we go that's it boom it's in done next thing you're going to need is something like this this is a it has an on and off button it's also Bluetooth enabled I only chose this because of the fact that it's very versatile as far as what I can do with it because it can also do Bluetooth speakerphone as well as power another device off of it or you could get just a regular cigarette charger or whatever but it has to have at least uh, 5 volts if you can look at that 5 volts and 1 amp if it doesn't have 5 volts 1 amp you're gonna have an issue powering the two USB slots now if you're trying to use this at home or in a hotel you're gonna need one of these uh, it's just your standard USB charger. You're definitely going to need one of these. This is your standard power cable. If you have an Android device, you probably have tons of these lying around the house. You just take it. Let's see how, which way it goes in here. Plug it in here. Take this piece here. You know, no duh moment. Plug it in there and then this device will come on automatically there's no power button so as long as there's power it will come on on its own next thing and this is optional you can either get one of these which is a USB keyboard I prefer this one because it has a USB keyboard and has a little trackball so you can use it as a mouse so you have be the best of both worlds so you don't need to plug in two devices this ran me about mm, $30 but you could also do what I did with this particular hack I got one of these. Now what this is, this is actually PC remote. Oh, dropped it. Sorry. It's an actual PC remote that has a little scroll guy here for uh, using your mouse, left click, right click, or whatever. It's, uh, it's compact. It's easy to use. And then this is the little receiver for it. Now in this particular hack, we're going to be using this. So I'm going to take this here, turn it over to where it has USB, plug it in the USB slot, done. There's no configuring. Raspberry Pi already knows what the device is. It takes a little bit for the machine to come up. It takes about 30 seconds to a minute for the machine to come up. But once it comes up, this should work just fine with it. This ran me about eight bucks. So altogether, this is $30 for this whole setup, eight bucks for this SD card. I mean, you should have an eight gig SD card in your house somewhere. If not, 10 bucks, no big deal. Next up, if you have a car that needs, um, uh, that has the composites, you're going to need one of these. This is going to be a microphone to uh, RCA. And what you're going to do is you're going to take this, plug it into the blue slot like that. And then you plug these two guys into the audio area of the actual car. That way you get audio to your speakers. And then you can get a, one of these little cables here. Plug this in here. And then plug this into the, to the actual video part of your uh, auxiliary port on your 
DVD player that's already in your car. If you bought one of those um, screens I was telling you about on uh, Amazon, you'll still need these two cables and you can plug directly into it. If you buy one of the more expensive ones, you can use your HDMI cable. Optional HDMI cable. You can use that, take it with you. I keep it, well, this one I haven't opened up yet, but you can just plug it in here and it's just like anything else you have HDMI plug and play. And last but not least, a hard drive. You want to get a network uh, or a um, laptop hard drive kind of thing here because what happens is this actually is powered by the USB. You don't need an extra power, so it works fine. You can get away with using an SD, uh, not SD card, but actual uh, uh, USB thumb drive, but you can get more space at one of these. This is, um, I went with solid state for this one, so this one's like 32 gigs and only ran me like 20 bucks for the, for the whole thing. But um, you can get one of those bigger ones that have like half a terabyte of it. And then you can just load a whole bunch of stuff. Now I'm going to attach some videos to this on how to back up your DVDs and everything. Because when you back up your DVDs, you can then back it up to this hard drive. And once your DVDs are on this hard drive, you can then turn around and play uh, uh, your DVDs through the Raspberry Pi device. Now the way this works is, is that once the machine comes on, you can use this remote, navigate to the video and hit play without having to take off your seatbelt, go under the car and start flipping DVDs back and forth. You can also hand this to your kids and they have control of changing the stuff that they, they want to watch. So you don't have to hear them nagging about, oh, put a new DVD in. No, here's the remote, do it yourself. Now let's go back into the vehicle and show you how this actually all comes together. As you can see, this is infrared, so you have to keep that sensor which is this thing here, some place where it's easy to, um, to get. I already showed you how everything got plugged in. So what we're going to do, oops, what we're going to do is we're going to move over here. I'm going to go to videos. Sorry. Files. I'm going to select that hard drive that I just put in there. And I'm going to hit play on this file here. There you go. And it should be playing through the speakers. Currently I have my music turned down because uh, I don't want copyright infringement to hit this video. But there you go. Very simple, very easy, altogether less than 100 bucks. Hope you guys enjoy. Bye-bye.